Uh, Anything? Gonna take a second because there's a little bit of a lag. <laughs> gotcha, Jenna. What did you? What were you? What did you do this weekend for fun? I went to the Renaissance Fair. The Minnesota Renaissance Fair. Fun fact: Our fearless leader, uh, fearless leader uh, Dave, went to see Penn and Teller last night. Really? Did you know that Penn <laughs> Penn and Teller's first uh, presentation, uh, first uh, time they ever performed together, was at the Minnesota Renaissance Fair? I did not. Now uh, I do. Many years ago. Cool. <laughs> That's cool. Well, we've had a couple of people join us, so I just want to remind you on the right hand side of your screen if you see anything, if you see a question, uh, questions bar, if you want to ask a question, Jenna will interrupt me and we will, uh, and uh, so this should be interactive, this should be helpful to you. Today's going to be a little lighter on, on the heavy content. It's really going to be try, trying to have a little fun romp. So today, what we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit about us here at BusyWeb. And then we're going to talk about schadenfreude, which is really the word of the day, schadenfreude. And we'll, I'll explain that in a little bit. And then at the end, uh, I'll uh, answer any questions you might have. And uh, once again, thanks for joining us. So uh, who are we? We are BusyWeb. We are a full-service digital marketing agency here in uh, Champlin, Minnesota, just north of Minneapolis. We were founded in 1999. We have a staff of 15 people. And uh, we have clients all over the world. What do I mean when I say we're a full-service digital marketing agency? It means we can take you from having a having absolutely nothing, create a brand identity around who you want to be, uh, take that brand identity online into creating a really uh, affirmative, uh, forward momentum-based website where your 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 website is actually doing positive things for you, and then uh, have a lot of digital marketing strategies to get you leads, get you new people looking at you, promote products, and all of the above. If you have any interest in working with us, we'd love to see you. You can join us at busyweb.com, which you've seen before, or you can call us at 612-424-9990. So there ends the pitch part of our show today. So let's uh, let's get started. Oops. Yeah, I forgot. I, I have this slide in here, too. This is what we do, but I just told you that. So uh, on our social media, if you want to find us, you can see uh, that uh, we are pre pretty consistent in our presentation. Uh, at Twitter or at BusyWeb. Uh, Facebook is at facebook.com slash BusyWeb. You can also find us on LinkedIn. You can also find us on Google+, which some of you did today. So let's get into what we're really here to talk about today, which is stupid social media mistakes. But because this is a work-related event, we want to make sure that we use uh, big words that sound really important. So today's word of the day class is schadenfreude. Jenna, do you know what schadenfreude means? I do indeed. <laughs> what does schadenfreude mean? It means taking delight at the pain of others. That's right. It's <laughs> happiness at the misfortune of others. That's what we're going to be talking about today. I'm going to provide you with a number of people who provide, made really colossally bad social media mistakes. And what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to laugh a little at their misfortune, but we're also going to try and learn a little and make sure that we don't, we don't fall off same suit. So some of what I'm going to show you is it's, it's okay if you're at a work computer, but uh, some of that it, I want to warn you ahead of time is a, is a little racy. It's a little offensive. Please understand that this is not something we're advocating. We're only showing this as a way that, that we can learn from others. So, but with that, let's get started. So, we've got five oops for people to show people to for for you to learn from today. So, our first one is that people will read words even if they're not there. So, what do I mean by this? I mean, <clears throat> I'll give you a great example. Years ago, my wife and I bought a Honda Pilot. It's an SUV. It's a great car. She's been driving it for years. And I said I wanted to get a vanity plate. I'm really into the Blues Brothers. I love the Blues Brothers. My son, who's 14 months and I, we're going to be the Blues Brothers for Halloween. And uh, I told my wife I wanted to get a vanity plate that said God is co, because we're driving a pilot, see, so it says God is co-pilot. I told that to my wife, and she said, why on earth would you want to have a license plate that says go disco? See, she superimposed the Ds to make another word. So. Uh, People, our, our eyes naturally are in, inclined to uh, read something even if it's not meant to do, be there, and that certainly holds true with hashtags on Twitter, which is what we're going to show. What I'm going to show you now. So, uh, in 2014, as th those of you who are NFL football fans know, that occasionally the NFL has a sort of a special event game that's played overseas in London, and so last year the Dallas Cowboys 
uh, went to, which is the, the most valuable sports franchise in all the world, uh, had to play a game in London. And uh, they were preparing for this great big London invasion. They had a lot of really pretty iconography that went along with that as they were trying to drum up interest in the game. And one of the things that they did is they created a hashtag so that people on Twitter could, could use and, and talk about the event of the Dallas Cowboys actually playing in London. So when you create a hashtag, well, what are we trying to say? We're trying to say that the Cowboys are, are, are playing and that they're also in U the UK. So we've got hashtag Cowboys. We've got hashtag UK. Well, let's put those together so they, it reads hashtag Cowboys UK. In a perfect world, that's what it should have read, but somebody didn't really look at it very carefully. So I, what I did is I capitalized the S. What the Dallas Cowboys did is they actually created a hashtag and encouraged people to tweet Cowboys suck. So as a Packer fan, I, I fully endorse this, the, 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 this process, but as a marketer, it's not really the best thing because the Cowboys truly just, uh, they, they wanted to, to, they made a hashtag that was the complete opposite of what they meant. And in trying to get people interested and in come to the game and create buzz around it, they created the absolute wrong kind of buzz. So our, our, our first pro tip is uh, when you're making a hashtag, make sure that there aren't any hidden words in there and it doesn't read the complete opposite of what you, what you really meant. So our next uh, oops is asking questions that have multiple answers or having an answer you don't necessarily want. Um, there's a famous story about when Abraham Lincoln was a, a lawyer he, would, he was asking the question, he was defending a man who uh, was accused of biting a man's nose off in a bar fight. And so he was questioning the witness, who, the alleged witness, and he said, well, did you, see, uh, did you see the fight? Well, no, I didn't see the fight. Did you see my client bite off the man's nose? No, I didn't. So then Lincoln took the absolute wrong next step, which is saying, well, how do you know that he bit the man's nose off? He asked a question that he didn't know the answer to, and the wit witness responded by saying, I saw him spit it out. So Lincoln obviously lost the case. Similarly, when we're at a lot of times when we want to have good engagement with people online, we want to ask open-ended questions. An open-ended question is a question that can have multiple answers, but we want to make sure that we limit those answers to positive things that give us a realm of a, a good possibility. So here's an example of how this went ethically wrong. The New York Mets, obviously a baseball team in New York, uh, ran a uh, ran a contest a couple of years ago where they were going to get give away uh, uh, tickets to a Mets game, and so they wanted you doing a, to write a story about why you're a Mets fan to hashtag I'm a Mets fan because, which is a really nice thing, right, uh, Jenna? And it, it, it it's it's you know it's, it's sweet <laughs> it's sweet it's got a good idea you know there's it's wanting to tell, have you tell stories about fathers and sons have stories about sitting out in the cold and watching your, your team in the playoffs. But that's not really what happened. I'm Some of the cleaner responses that the Mets got were, I'm a Mets fan because my parents didn't love me as a child. And it's not really what they were hoping for, I don't think. Or how about, I'm a Mets fan because I'm mentally unstable. I don't think that really covered what they were hoping for from a heartwarming, sweet story. Or uh, here's the best one uh, that was more appropriate. It's, I'm a Mets fan because I'm a masochist and often feel the urge to punish myself. So what did the Mets do wrong here? They realized that they had an opportunity. To, uh, they didn't realize and they didn't think through the question. They wanted to have something positive, but instead they left it open-ended. And so as a result, people were able to offer smart aleck responses. So our pro tip for number two is when you're asking for engagement from your audience, be specific about what, what you want. In this particular instance, the better, better question to ask is why are you a Mets fan? Why are you happy? So here's our third oops. Uh, scheduling is not always the best idea. There are a lot of really great uh, tools that we talk about here at BusyWeb all the time about how to auto schedule posts and how to share information uh, in a way that makes sense for you from a time perspective. So you don't have to sit and write up posts all day, every day. 
There are tools like Hootsuite where you can actually write out a, a listing of posts and then you can schedule them to go out. However, that's not always the best idea. And here's a great example. Uh, last year, uh, uh, Fox launched a new cable channel. It's called FXX, and it basically shows old Fox stuff. And one of the ways in which they promoted the new channel to try and get people to sign up for the channel is they ran every Simpsons episode ever, from the very first one 26, 27 years ago to last week's episode. And it took probably about 10 days. And it was nothing but Simpsons episodes all day, every day. And this was run on a cable channel. It was a paid cable channel. And it wasn't, and you'd have to, you know, obviously sign up through a cable company. And one of the major cable companies in the United States is a company called Charter Communications. They're here in the South Metro, the Twin Cities. They're all over the country. And so uh, in, in trying to promote this idea of being able to watch every single Simpsons episode ever, they tweeted a lot of questions and about uh, every Simpsons ever. They created a hashtag around it uh, and, they create, and they posted a lot of stuff around it. Problem was they actually scheduled the posts to go out. And so during the every Simpsons ever, uh, every Simpsons ever um, marathon, they actually had a massive cable outage that took out cable in many, many cities. So is this question a bad question to ask? Absolutely not. But if people's cables are out, then Charter as a company is essentially asking them to do something that they are per literally preventing people from doing. So obviously their answers were uh, not exactly what they wanted. Like this particular subscriber says, nope, because our pricey service is down. And eh, it's not really as helpful as you want it to be. Or how about, I would watch the marathon if my charter wasn't down. So what can we learn from this? Well, scheduling is a good thing. And as a small business owner, it's a really positive and, and productive thing that you should use in order to make your life easier. However, you, you need to remember what you've posted. Things happen, events co come into play that change what you can and can't do. And so just scheduling posts and then never thinking about them again, that's not really as helpful as you want, want it to be because ultimately, uh, if something like this happens in your business where you, if you have an outage, asking your, your audience how well they like your service when your service is down is going to be wildly counterproductive. This is, what, this is uh, one of our, our owner Dave's and our president Dave's favorite. Uh, we're going to call this one oops number four, sucks on a plane. Uh, I'm going to warn you ahead of time, this gets a little bit racy. Uh, and again, this is not something that we are uh, uh, we are advocating, but just using this as an example of, of what not to do. So there's a woman named Justine Sacco. She was based in New York City. She's 26 years old. She's a PR executive, so she understands how to talk to the public, how to talk to uh, uh, how to to present something in, in, a, in a positive light. And uh, last year, actually in 2013, she was asked by her employer to go to South Africa for to, to meet a client. That sounds fine, right, Jenna? Nothing, nothing, oh, yeah. no, nothing but, bad you know, could yes. go, go wrong there. Well, right before she got on the plane, uh, Justine tweeted a joke, what she thought was a joke. She said, going to Africa, hope I don't get AIDS. Just kidding, I'm white. Yikes. <laughs> yikes, and, uh, yikes indeed. So there are just many, many levels of epic fail here. In no particular order, uh, Justine was able to, number one, uh, offend anybody who has any loved one who has HIV or AIDS. She was able to offend really the entire continent of Africa in one sitting. Now here comes the fun part, realized that she tweeted this and then she got on a plane to, to go from New York to South Africa, which is a, is a 12 hour plane ride. And she doesn't have Wi-Fi on the plane. So she got a massive, massive backlash to the point where uh, there were hashtags and people following the plane online to see when it would land and when Justine would actually realize what she said and, and uh, 
and, and how she would deal with it. Obviously, as soon as she got off the plane, she was immediately fired. So our pro tip is this. If you're going to be visible and be racist, don't be without Wi-Fi for 12 hours in a row. That's a, that, that's a little bit funny, but here's the, here's the real tip. Uh, you can believe what you want, but realize that sometimes it's not the most beneficial thing to share it with a large audience that you can't control. The second pro tip is, is, is this. If you're going to write something funny and you're not sure if somebody is going to be offended or not, chances are good somebody's going to be offended and you shouldn't do it. Humor only works if it doesn't get you in trouble. If you have to explain it, if you have to apologize for it, it's truly not very funny. This is, uh, <coughs> she's, uh, this is really a great example of how somebody's life was completely ruined by, by one really bad joke. So here's our, our, our oops number five. This is uh, what we like to call posting and consequences. So uh, in, in shorthand, this is a, a really good example of you shouldn't be friends with your boss online if you don't like your boss. I've got two great examples, and I'm going to share this mostly because our boss is in Vegas today. And if you're listening, I just want you guys to know that this doesn't apply to you at all. So uh, here's a great example. Somebody posted on Facebook, I love when I can hear my boss talking on the phone at work. As long as I can hear her on the phone, I know it means she's not going to sneak up behind me and see how many web browsers I, I currently have open. Oops. It just so happens that she's friends with her boss on Facebook. So her boss responds, I love it when my employees post things like this on Facebook. I'll need to see you in my office at four. <coughs> That's not going to go well for her. I've got one more example. This is, this is my favorite of a, so, a social media epic fail. But here's your pro tip. Remember uh, what the great philosopher Drew Carey once said. There's a support group for people who don't like their job. It's called everybody, and we meet at the bar. That's a funny statement, but realize that. It, it, but the real pro tip is this: don't write anything online that you don't feel comfortable saying to somebody's face. If you don't feel comfortable walking up to your boss and explaining to her, explaining how great it is to hear her on the phone, because you know then she's not going to sneak up and see how many how much work you're not doing, you shouldn't be writing it online under any circumstances. But here's my favorite: this is an old oldie but a goodie. And this is a little this is a little uh, blurry. So I'll read it for you. This is a gentleman named Kevin who was friends with his uh, boss named Paul. This was a long, long time ago. And uh, Paul, on, a, on an early morning, uh, wrote to his boss, Hey, Paul, I just wanted you to know I will not be able to be into work tomorrow. Something came up, and I have to go to New York this morning for a couple of days. I apologize for the delayed notice. That's not a bad note, is it, John? No. No, it's nice. Everybody <laughs> writes these. Everybody gets these. And uh, so his boss, you, you know, it's a, it's a fairly benign thing. Th things come up. Things happen. And uh, and uh, Paul writes back to Kevin, hey, Kevin, thanks for letting us know. Hope everything is okay in New York. Cool wand. What do you think he meant by cool wand, Jenna? I have no idea. <laughs> Well, it turns out that our boy Kevin uh, was Facebook friends with his boss, Paul, and at 2 a.m. the night before, had this picture posted on his Facebook page. You'll notice he's dressed as a fairy with a very nice wand, uh, clearly at a party. Uh, drink he's not even drinking good beer. He's drinking natural light. I mean, you really should just get fired for drinking bad beer uh, on anything. So... Remember that while pictures are fun, there's always a different side to it. Remember how people look at you is reflected on the information you share share with them. I, I don't know if Kevin found uh, gainful employment after the fact, but uh, good news is he lives on in uh, seniors everywhere who are madly cleaning off their Facebook page as we speak. So. That was all fun and games, and that was some, some funny examples of some, of some really smart people doing bad things. But how do I avoid doing these things? Well, here's a couple of best, best practices that we can remember. First of all, most important that we can learn from the PR lady is this. If you're not sure if somebody is going to be offended at something that you're writing, chances are they probably will be. Uh, so exercise caution and remember less is more. If you think being funny is going to work, then do it. I encourage it. 
I am guilty of thinking, thinking I'm funny just about every day, but being cautious and remembering that Sometimes everybody doesn't find you funny is, is really a smart move. And if you want to remember a poster child for that, remember uh, Justine, the PR lady. Secondly, schedule. We encourage scheduling of postings. To, it makes your life easier using automated tools uh, like Hootsuite. But just don't forget what you've scheduled when life throws you a curve, especially if you're in a service-based industry. And our poster child, remember that is the Simpsons in every episode ever. When the, when the cable company posted, how well do you like the Simpsons, when much of the country didn't actually have cable service at that time. Third, be specific when you're asking for something. When you're asking for a, a, a memory of, or an explanation as to why you're a good, uh, oops, why you're a good <laughs> fan, <clears throat> why you like your team, remember that the best way to, best way to show that is by is by asking, tell me a good story. Tell me a positive memory. We're going to quickly patch, push through here because I didn't press the wrong button. So don't worry, you're not having a technical difficulty. This is a really great PowerPoint that I did. All right, third one. So when you're asking for something, talk about a positive memory. Why do you love the Mets? Why is it why are they your team? And, and, and but I say, you know, share me, share a really great positive memory. Don't just share a memory because then you're going to get smart aleck responses. And finally, treat everything online like you're saying it to a real person. If you're not going to say it to a real person, eye to eye, face to face, you shouldn't say it about those people online because ultimately, no matter what, you're going to get caught. And the way to remember that is uh, remember the kid with the wand, nice wand. So one final uh, bonus that I threw in here is, uh, you know, one other thing, make sure that uh, you listen to the people who are talking to you. Social media offers a great opportunity to have conversations with people in a large group environment, but also to uh, actually tangibly and functionally listen to what they're having to say and really uh, take, that, take that feedback to heart and actually uh, do something with it. So here's an example that came from my life. Uh, there's a store by my house called Witch Witch. They make really fantastic sub sandwiches. They've got a, a sub there called the, the Wicked Witch, which I just think is great. It's got five meats and three different cheeses on it. I think it's fantastic. They have a loyalty program, which anytime that you buy a witch, you, you know, you get a little punch card, and then once you get 10, you get a free sandwich. So the other day, I had dutifully saved my, my, my punch card, and I finally got my free sandwich. And I was really excited, and I went, and I filled out, I got my Wicked Witch, and I filled out everything uh, on the little bag that they, ha they, they have you fill out. And I gave it to the lady, and I proudly gave her my card, and I said, today's my free day. She said, oh, that's great, fantastic, it'll be $5. I said, what? I, 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 what? This is supposed to be free sandwich day. You're ruining free sandwich day. And she explained to me that the free sandwich that I had been waiting months and months to get and dutifully saving my card was actually for only a small sandwich. And so I was pretty disappointed in that. But I ate my sandwich because it's a good sandwich. And I posted this on their, on their Facebook page. It said, I cashed in my free sandwich yesterday after diligently saving my card through nine sandwiches. I was shocked to learn that it was only for a medium sandwich, maximum $6. I'm sure it's written down somewhere on your cover, but I feel like it was a bait and switch to only offer such a small amount when most of your sandwiches are more expensive. I'm disappointed and I'm probably going to be looking somewhere elsewhere from now on. Now to their credit, which which did uh, what everyone should do when, uh, it, it, when faced with negative reinforcement online. They said, can we please uh, thank you for your feedback? Can we please speak to you offline? So I spoke to a very nice lady at corporate, and I explained my disappointment. I said, I'm not really that mad. I'm just disappointed that I, I, I did all this, and all I get is a small sandwich. And she said, you know what? I really want to make this right for you. Uh, can you give me your address? And I said, absolutely. So I gave her my address, and guess what I got in the mail the other day, Jenna? Was it a sandwich? I got a coupon for one small sandwich. <laughs> and the coupon had expired in 2013. So as much as I went through all this and I really felt validated that I was listened to, ultimately they did absolutely nothing to solve the problem. And so I feel like they didn't listen to me at all. 
So, uh, and uh, especially, it, it seems like they were just even taunting me by giving me a coupon that expired in 2013. So, if I can stress one thing to you today, make sure you listen to people and actually genuinely listen to their feedback and try and make things right. It's a great opportunity to have conversations with your prospects. It's a great opportunity to have conversations with your customers, but you actually have to listen to them and, and, and take the feedback in stride. So I'm going to stop there and say, hey, Jenna, do we have any questions? Has anybody asked us any questions yet? Uh, not yet. Let me just check on YouTube. Not on YouTube and not on Google+. Plus. Okay, perfect. Well, I guess we've, we, we've entertained and educated just a bit, so let's wrap up just a slight. slightly. Uh, just a quick reminder and quick plug for us here at BusyWeb. Our, we are great, fantastic web designers, but in addition to that, we also host websites. And we also do maintenance and backups on your, your site, so you'll never have a problem. It's our sting-free guarantee. And we also do a lot of online marketing programs. But in addition to that, we offer our busy webinar every Wednesday at noon. Today was about uh, stupid things that people do to screw up your so their social media and how you can avoid them. But we have revolving topics every single week. These are completely free. If you're watching this on YouTube, uh, realize that if you had joined us in real time, you can ask a lot of questions. And, uh, and and have it be interactive. So again, this is a, a, an interactive service, but, uh, and it's absolutely free. I encourage you to go to busyweb.com to register. And that, But if you can't make it at, at the end of it, it's uh, posted to YouTube every single time. One final thing before we go, uh, if you go to busyweb.com slash buzz, you can get a free buzz report. This is a long, detailed audit about everything that your website is doing, uh, both good, bad, and ugly and it will give you the opportunity to really see if uh, you need to do something else in order to make your life a little bit better. So you can go to busyweb.com slash buzz, and you can get a, a real time, real grade about what you need to do to grow. Thanks everybody for joining us. If you have any questions, you can uh, reach me at uh, trigby at, at, uh, at uh, busyweb.com. But thanks everybody for joining us. We'll see you next Wednesday at noon. Bye. We're good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>